Hello, I'm in Georgia and the mosquitoes are eating me up, man. Um, I gotta get out of here. But I'm just relaxing. And I want to talk, I think it's important that we express what the Lord is putting on our hearts as we pray, as we meditate. And I keep coming back to that we are, who's we? The American people, the patriots, those who love their country and who want um, something to be left of America when all this pandemic, all these, this around us um, reaches its conclusion. That I think too many of us are asking the wrong question. And the question should not be, it's very important, you know, did the uh, virus originate in a lab or a market or whatever. But I think we're caught up on some peripheral issues. I think the big issue is why are we so easily deceived? Especially Christians. Why are Christians, professing Christians in America, of many different varieties, so easily deceived? Why were so many so easily taken in by George W. Bush? and so easily lied to about uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and Afghanistan and why uh, are so many easily uh, overruled by sodomites and why are we so easily enslaved to people like Dr. Fauci no matter what the the nuances of the stories are that they tell us and I'm not making them out to be peripheral but why do they jerk us around and why were they not able to jerk around our great-grandfathers. What changed? Did they get more powerful? No, 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 no. I don't believe they did. So I was 18 years old in 1997 and the first three quarters of 1998 and I attended Rose Hill College, the first Eastern Orthodox College in the United States. It went two years. I was a terrible student, horrible non-existent study skills. I was bright, I was intelligent, which is why they accepted me and helped me and were very gracious to me. Um, and it was in this beautiful, I don't have time to go into it, beautiful antebellum mansion in Aiken, South Carolina called Rose Hill. It was founded by uh, Owen Jones, a former Anglican priest. And, and it was just an amazing, magical experience. A big creaking door that opened into this old uh, gate of a, stru of a mansion that had survived the Civil War and uh, just wonderful but this uh, experience was like no other and w I went home for a while and Frederica Matthews Green and her husband Father Gregory an Orthodox priest invited me very graciously and even bought me a ticket to Baltimore Maryland from my home in Kansas City Missouri to uh, visit my friend and roommate from college, David Matthews Green. And Frederica, for those of you who don't know her, are, uh, uh, she is the um, face of American conversion to orthodoxy for many people. Hank Hennegraff has um, interviewed her in the past few years. She uh, represents sort of like the, the grandmother who is there to usher you in if you're an American evangelical ready to convert to uh, Greek or Eastern or uh, any form of orthodoxy. And anyway, I was good friends with her son, her firstborn son, David, at one time. David and Jonathan. And um, I, I, I attended the wedding of David of, and his wife and held the crown over his head. And I really love David. Uh, he doesn't want to be my friend anymore. I've got, I guess I've got to take at least 50% of the responsibility for that because my personality was caustic. You know, I was 18, 19 years old. Uh, um, I had a lot of sins and problems. Still, not that I don't anymore, but that I was working through. And so i got to own my errors and my foolishness that I said and did stupid things but you know I don't think it was that bad <laughs> I mean none of them were criminal but um, I was a dumb kid Lord forgive me for the sins of my youth I did foolish things but I don't think that's what really separated us I think that what separated us is David was raised to be a pacifist and his parents uh, Frederica and Father Gregory 
were raised, um, not were raised, but were hippies. They were hippies and converted to Eastern Orthodoxy. It's not, they don't really call it Eastern Orthodoxy. I am, by the way, an Orthodox Christian. But what turned me off back then, I became a catechumen back then, but what turned me off back then to Orthodox Christianity was, let me be honest, the family of Frederica Matthews Green and their pacifism and their feminism. She is a, a leader in Feminists for Life. And David, when I first met him at Rose Hill College in Aiken, South Carolina, her firstborn son, took the position that if his family was attacked, he would not, even if it was necessary to save their lives, use lethal force to defend his family. He couldn't do it. And I associated that foolishly with Orthodox Christianity because they represented it to me. But that's not what Eastern, uh, what Orthodox Christianity teaches at all. So I've written David, I've tried to communicate with him. He doesn't want to be my friend. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, I should have made it a contention from that point forward because I resented him from that point forward because I didn't really ever think of him as a man after I knew that he would not use force to defend his family. And I misassociated, is that even a word? I mistakenly associated that with Orthodox Christianity and that actually put off, but that, that's not their fault. I could have known, and in fact I did know, that that was not an essential characteristic of Orthodox Christianity. Nonetheless, I should have made it a point of contention with David and me, but I let a bad foundation, as a teenager, I let a bad foundation be laid for my friendship and now the friendship is gone. Because it's true, you're not a man if you won't use lethal force when necessary, the least amount of lethal force to defend your family. And Jesus won't accept you. Jesus is not a pacifist. Pacifism is a heresy. Feminism is also a heresy. It's not an accident that Eve was deceived, as the Apostle Paul tells us in the garden, and Adam was not deceived. God has not ordained that women should overrule men that she should have an equal vote to nullify her husband's vote if she chooses to? No, God has not ordained this. This is why we are weak. This is why we are weak and this is not Christianity. This is not Christianity of any variety. No matter what flavor you choose, Christianity stinks when it is infected with the heresies of pacifism and feminism and the Lord Jesus Christ will reject it and will reject you when you adhere to a Christianity that is characterized by pacifism and feminism. Frederica Matthews Green is, and I'm picking on them because, you know, why not? She's out there. She's a luminary of her family. No one knows her husband, the priest. Everyone knows her who know them. And they're example number one, because they're hippies they, who brought their hippiness <laughs> and their Marxism and their pacifism and their feminism, which is proto-Marxism and is a, uh, at, le at the very least, a, a tactic of Marxism to, to uh, just bathe our brains and our psychology in uh, estrogen until men cannot stand up. Hey, our ancestors were not so. This is not how, my friends, my brothers and my sisters, this is not how the West was won. This is not how the Christians were, the Roman Catholic Christians, the Protestant Christians of old. Charles Spurgeon was not so, okay? Many of the popes were not so, they were masculine. Innocent III was not so. Orthodox Christianity was not uh, so. Snap out of it, Americans. You're joking. You're resting on the laurels of, of those who went before you. And it's all disappearing and turning to sand and dust before your eyes. And you're facing only starvation and confusion. Death and confusion of face. As Daniel the prophet said, Confusion of face belongs to us 
for our sins, O Lord, but to you, glory. O oh, dread and most high God, the Lord is destroying America and American flavors of Christianity. I don't care if you're Eastern, Western, it doesn't matter. If you won't defend innocent babies, if you won't defend those who are being attacked, you're good for nothing. Jesus told us to take swords, not to, in the Gospel of Luke, not to stop him from being crucified, but to defend the innocent. And if you won't do that, you're good for nothing, and the Lord doesn't want you. You need to repent. You better repent fast, because death is on the horizon, and for those who live, they will desire death.